Welcome to session 2. So, last time, last session, we actually stopped with my hero in Vice Gene actually pulling out the cartridge and the cartridge fell down and it fell and it broke. When it broke, see here on the slide, there are two items inside it. She actually find a micro camera and then a micro film that is protruding out of this. She is wise, my heroine is very wise. So, she immediately was able to relate the entire thing. So, what has happened? Every 15 days, the JKL fellow took the cartridge out and he took the microfilm from the micro camera and he made a print of this, what was there in the film. So, what was there inside the film? Every paper that was photocopied in the last 15 days, a yeah, image of that was stored in the micro camera. And when they opened the micro, when, when the micro camera was taken out and they made a print out, all the documents were printed. So, that included the tender documents also, the quotations also. So, basically JKL got access to all these documents which included the quotation and obviously he shared it with the competitors. The competitors when they looked at this quotation, they know the exact pricing that these fellows have quoted and so they, they quoted something like 1 rupee less. So, you quote for 105 rupees, you will quote for 104 rupees 99 paisa and he was getting the tender, right. And this explained completely why JKL, the TTT, the company lost the entire game. Now, what was wrong here? Was it the people? Was it the process? Was it the technology? Lot of process was followed to buy this machine. Whom should we blame here? What happened? Right? So, let us start doing a forensic of how do how this has happened and what we would we could have done to prevent it. So, one of the thing is that this something somebody gives you free. See, if somebody comes and tells, I will give you a cartridge free every 15 days, the company should have been a fool to not suspect it, right. So, if something is given as a discount, we should take it with a pinch of salt. If you are a sec, if you really want to build a career in security, this is the first advice you should give if you are called as a security consultant. Anything given free, take it with a pinch of salt. This is one very interesting example there. Now, this was obvious, so immediately TTT actually went and sued JKL saying this is this and paid lot of lawyer fees, okay, because it is a very high technical case, even if it is not, it will be made one because the way we can get a proof for this is really going to be technical, it is not going to be easy. Though the problem is very simple, it, it really becomes a, uh, you know, a very uh, big case, technically so solid case and we need really powerful lawyers to argue this case in the court. But this case could did not even could not even survive in favor of JKL for the simple reason. So, JKL went and told my lord, we removed the cartridge based on uh, TTT's purchase condition. Now, TTT went and said that they had a camera inside and they removed, but JKL told I removed it because you, you gave a purchase order. The TTT as a company has given me a purchase order. They told me I have to remove every 15 days. I removed it based on them. They even set a process. I could go in. Everybody was watching. I removed the cartridge, put a new cartridge. I took it back. I completely re-inked it and gave it to a school. I am a reseller. Somebody makes this. I am asked to do this. I did it. I did not do anything more than this. This is what JKL says. Now, TTT went back and said, this vendor did not inform us that there is a camera inside the cartridge. So, this fellow also said, immediately JKL also said, they did not also ask what ink I am using. So, I need not explain everything. Please note, this is something very important, JKL's argument, the last part of the slide. Camera is an additional backup mechanism used in case of destruction of records and is used for surveillance of unauthorized photocopy. That is the reason why I have kept a camera inside. We have mentioned this in page number 342, section 169.1.4 of additional advanced features booklet, which can be downloaded free from our website. When you bought this, you should have downloaded all those things and seen what is inside. A link to this is mentioned in section 721.3.4, page 423 of advanced features booklet, which can also be downloaded free from our website and is in turn referred in page 22 of the user manual which are shipped with the product. So, you should have read the user manual. There was a 
pointer there. You should have gone and read that entire document. In that there was a pointer. From that you should have gone and read another document and you have really found out that there is a camera. Right? So do not say that I did not inform you. This is all there. It also went ahead and said, so Jekyll said, so we do not put everything. So we just put something very interesting and important. So, so do not expect us to put everything in the manual. It will confuse the customer. So once this argument was proved that yes, there is, it is because the company TTT did, did not go through the 1000 page manual related to a Xerox machine or a photocopy machine. It is their mistake. They should have gone through. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you say I agree, right? whenever you install a software you say I agree, somewhere you say there is a license condition you say I agree. right? Many of the industries sign service level agreement without understanding the technical aspects. right? So, please be very careful when you are doing this, right? because once you press that I agree, you are legally bounded by what that means. Now, coming back, the judge did not have any option but to dismiss the case in favor of the photocopy company, machine company JKL with an advice to TTT to be careful in the future which anyway it had lost. Okay? So, once the judgment came, this is interesting. JKL sued a deformation case on TTT for questioning its integrity. Right? So, this is a cyber fraud which has happened where you cannot trace back. There is no forensic that you can do. There is no proof that JKL has indeed removed the camera, improved, removed the slides, removed the film, he made a copy. Even if he made a copy, he shared it with the competitor. Nothing could be proved here because as the cartridge leaves out, your, your premises, it is completely in the custody of the JKL. Your purchase condition says that once he replaced the replaced cartridge, right, the cartridge that has been removed and it has been replaced by a new one, the removed cartridge, the moment this exchange happened, is the property of the JKL. So, I do not know legally whether you can sue or not. So, this is a very interesting question. I hope some lawyers see this course and they can make a decision about that. So, what happened next? So, just to basically tell you one thing that modern IT infrastructure is an extremely complex system. We have just talked about one simple photocopy machine, right? But if you really take any infrastructure, let us take a financial institution like a bank, there is a data center. Inside the data center, what are the things you will have? You will have a database first where your account number, everything is stored. All the details about transactions are stored. Then there is going to be a huge uh, uh, set of servers which are doing your web application to access this database. There, are, there will be an operating system on which these servers are running. There will be a networking which connects all this with the external world and also internally, both the LAN and WAN networking. So, at least four important components the hardware, <coughs> the software, the operating system, the web application, web, the database, networking. At least these are all five different courses in a CSE curriculum. Any curriculum across the world in computer science engineering, undergraduate or postgraduate, undergraduate in specific, we will have whatever I mentioned database, networking, hardware, uh, software, operating system, these are all fundamental core courses in this. So, for me to have a global understanding because if I look at a fraud, right, it is not going to be just on the operating system, it can be a combination of vulnerabilities that existed in the network plus operating system, network plus operating system plus hardware. So, where the vulnerability comes, how it comes, these are all questions that need to be answered in a very, very big way. For me to have a complete vision of this, I need to be sort of, you know, aware of all these entities. The entire CSC curriculum, the computer science and engineering curriculum, all the systems courses, I should be thorough enough for me to understand what is happening inside a data center. Not only the understanding of that when something that is not to happen has happened, then going and doing a forensic will need very deep understanding of not only cursory level, but the very deep understanding of the functioning of the hardware, the database, the web application the operating system and the networking. right? And today, 
when we look at IT infrastructures, say financial institution, insurance institutions, many many things like uh, even factories, etc. These are all outsourced models. Some system integrator maintains it for you and gives you the service. So, in the case of a cyber forensic attack that has happened, what is the insight a, a particular organization will have? All the insights have to come through the system integrator. They are not going to have an insight. It is very difficult for an organization to have an independent insight of this and that is also another major issue. So, do I own yes, IT infrastructure? Yes. But do I govern that IT infrastructure? Largely no. 95 percent of this is basically uh, you know uh, taken off from the uh, you know from the uh, outsourced model. Somebody else maintains it and you just use it. So, this is how the modern IT infrastructure works. So, this is one story that I want to tell as a part of session 2. Now, in the next session, I will now elaborate. So, Weisgen moved out to some other industry because she lost the job and that Xerox machine also failed. So, now she, she actually moved into another industry and then we will start tra tracing her career from that industry onwards in the next session. Thank you.